Chicago Bears general manager Ryan Poles is sticking to his company line this offseason. They like Justin Fields, but they're going to do their due diligence on the quarterback prospects in the NFL draft. But why won't he just be more clear and more definitive and leave no, no shadow of a doubt that Justin Fields is their guy? You are Locked On Bears, your daily Chicago Bears podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. This is Locked on Bears, and I'm your host, Lauren Cox. I'm here to bring you your daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. You can follow me on Twitter at CoxSports1. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked on Bears. You can like Locked on Bears on Facebook. Join the Locked on Bears Facebook group for even more Bears talk. And make sure you hit that subscribe button on the Locked on Bears YouTube channel to keep up with all of our video podcasts as well. Thanks for making Locked on Bears your first listen today. We are part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. On the show today, we will hear from Chicago Bears general manager Ryan Poles at the NFL Scouting Combine, trying to give more clarity on what they want to do with the number one overall pick and what they want to do with Justin Fields, and largely saying many of the same things we heard from him after the season ended, but doubling down on a similar stance. It still leaves me wondering, why, why won't he just be more clearly definitive on this? Why does he keep having to leave even just some semblance of doubt or a breadcrumb for any outsider to grab onto and and try and make some sort of controversy out of nothing here. Because we've talked on this podcast before. We know the Chicago Bears are not going to trade Justin Fields. The Chicago Bears are moving full steam ahead with Justin Fields as their quarterback. It's been reported a few different ways from a few different people. I know one of the sources that one of those people reported it from. It's a very good source within the Bears organization of someone who would know what that was going about. I saw that whole interaction take place down at the Senior Bowl. We know Justin Fields is the guy. So why won't Ryan Poles just say that straight up? He keeps leaving a little bit of something there where he says, yes, we like Justin Fields, but there's always a but. There's always a little bit of something else, a little bit of the door, just a little bit left open so that somebody outside of the organization can look at some quotes out of context and say, see, they might not stick with Justin Fields. Here's here's how Ryan Poles first answered the question, talking about the number one overall pick and his quarterback at the Combine. Hey, Ryan, has anything changed with, with Justin Fields and you saying he essentially had to be blown away to, to trade him? Anything changed in that regard? No, nothing's changed there. I saw, you know, the the deal from yesterday in terms of leaning one way or the other you know i think that's always been the case we've always leaned that way because justin did some really good things i'm excited about where his game's going to go um but at the same time when you sit in our situation at one overall you have to do your due diligence you have to investigate everything you got to spend time with those guys just to make sure we're making the right decision um what's important to me and i think everyone knows me by now and how uh, i want to treat our players We'll be in communication with Justin along the way just to make sure that, you know, he knows what we're doing and nothing's a surprise to him. Let's be clear. Those are not the words of a general manager who's definitely looking to trade his quarterback or anything like that. But why why, why even leave some semblance of a doubt there, right? They're talking about we'll, we'll keep in touch with Justin Fields and let him know what our plans are. And we're excited about Justin Fields, but, but we're still going to do our due diligence on the quarterback prospects. And of course, he always says like the quarterback would have to really blow us away is the phrase he keeps using for us to make that kind of change at quarterback. It's March 1st now, I guess, as we're listening to it, it was February 28th as he gave those quotes. What what are we still doing here, right? It, it was one thing when it's January and the season just ended and they're still in the very early process, right? We're still going to reevaluate how this season went and we're still going to evaluate the draft class. And I totally understand Ryan Poles doing his due diligence. It's his job as a general manager to evaluate every prospect in the draft and every option in free agency and look at any way he might be able to upgrade his team, even if he already believes a lot in the player that he has there. 
that makes perfect sense for January when we had that first press conference. But we're almost two full months later. The Bears have done most of their draft work. Matt Eberflus said at the Combine, 80% of their player evaluation is based on the tape, and the rest is like Combine interviews, medicals, pro day workouts, etc. So they've got 80% of the work done on these evaluations, these prospects. So by now, I feel like you pretty much know either a guy is going to blow you away by this point or not. He's not going to blow you away sometime in the next month at his pro day and his combine to make you say, you know what, never mind. We're going to switch up for Justin Fields. So why not just say, yep, Justin Fields is our starting quarterback. He's our guy. We are not looking to make any changes at the quarterback position. Be completely definitive about it and don't leave any room for anybody to speculate and kind of create this buzz so that when Justin Fields is doing interviews at the Super Bowl, he's being asked about, well, what happens if the Bears trade you? And how do you feel about the Bears maybe thinking about trading you? Like, it's this controversy and it's these talking points for nothing just because the general manager won't definitively say it concretely. And I, I guess give him credit for being honest. And I do... I appreciate honesty from the GM and I want honesty and transparency from the general manager. But I mean, at some point here, what, what, what are you gaining by keeping this door open? Just a, just a tiny little bit about maybe we could still look for another quarterback in this draft and maybe this, maybe that, I mean, is that, is that helping to generate trade value for the number one overall pick? Are, are teams more likely to trade to one if they think, you might take a quarterback because if you're going to take the quarterback, then you're not going to trade the pick. So why would them thinking you might like a quarterback make it? They, do they think, oh, well, the Bears really like a quarterback. But if I just up my offer a little bit more, maybe they won't want to upgrade the quarterback position. Like, of course, every team wants to upgrade the quarterback position. The Bears wouldn't trade down if they thought one of these quarterbacks was going to blow them away. Like if the quarterback was going to meet the criteria to blow them away to get rid of Justin Fields, then it's going to meet the criteria to not trade down from the number one pick. So I just don't feel like there's any sort of direct value on the trade market for that number one overall pick. You don't have to, you, you can commit to Justin Fields and say, hey, we're still not sure whether we want to stay at one or trade down. You don't have to commit to what you're doing with the number one pick. But why not just say, without a doubt, don't leave any question, Justin Fields is our guy. Let's go forward like that. Now, if you listen fully to everything Ryan Pohl said or more of what Ryan Pohl says, he sounds like a general manager who very clearly is all in on, on Justin Fields as a quarterback, even though he won't, for some reason, directly say it as much. But it's important to hear it from the general manager himself and really hear that reaffirmation of Justin Fields as their guy. That's next on Locked on Bears. The Locked On Bears podcast is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook, the number one sportsbook in America because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's free money that comes back to you in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So whether you're right or wrong, you get to play again with FanDuel. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app because it's safe, secure, and super easy to use. You can bet on the NFL Draft on what player goes number one overall, which defensive player is the first player off the board, which wide receiver goes first, and so much more, plus XFL football, NFL futures. We're right in the thick of the NBA season, hockey season as well. Some big trades going on there. All of it is at FanDuel. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL and NBA. I want to make it clear, as much as I'm frustrated that Ryan Poles keeps kind of leaving the door open about Justin Fields and what they want to do at quarterback, I have no doubts that Justin Fields is their guy. I, the, my frustration is that he opens the Bears up to media speculation and these nonstop talking heads talking about what the Bears should do with Justin Fields when it's already been answered pretty definitively by reporting and, and other people within the organization and being the source for other reporting on what they're going to do with Justin Fields. It doesn't mean Fields is perfect and that there's there's they shouldn't, you know, consider other options, but it's too late now, right? They've considered other options. There's not that quarterback in this draft that is blowing them away at this point, and they're, they're going to roll with Justin as that guy. And really, when you 
Listen to the way Ryan Poles talks about Fields. You can hear it in there in some of the, some of the language he does hints at like, yeah, he's, kind, he's, he's our guy, but he just, he's not saying that directly. And I don't know why he's, I mean, he's been asked about this 10 or 12 different ways across not only multiple press conferences, but appearances on shows like CHGO. And he was on uh, one of the NBC sports shows with, uh, with Phil Sims and the, the pro football talk guy, Mike Florio. And, you know, and he gets kind of asked this question and he still won't definitively say like, yeah, Justin Fields is our guy. He keeps coming back to those lines about doing our due diligence, but liking Justin Fields. But I, I think it's important to make sure that we're also recognizing the positive things he is saying about Justin Fields. He's not just ignoring and dodging anything positive about Fields, but he is the way he talks positively about Fields. And I think some of the language he uses hints a little bit more at that more of a definitive answer, even if he's not outright saying it straight up. So here are, here are two clips of Ryan Poles's Indianapolis scouting combine press conference spliced back to back here. So they weren't back to back answers. I mean, they were chronological, but there were questions in between here. I've edited them together because they're both short and again, different ways that he talks about what he likes about Justin Fields and, and kind of tells us in other words that he's the guy. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is it safe to say from what you've said now and the last time we met that you're planning on just being the quarterback? Uh, that's the plan right now. Um, and like I said, we're going to do our homework on, on this class. And if something changes, and again, I'll just use the same statement, we got to be blown away uh, to say, you know what, I think this is best for our organization. When you say blown away, mm -hmm. how much does that maybe apply to Justin that he did last year in terms of the running that he showed you as yeah. you started? Those are those moments that did blow you away, that his athletic ability and, and ability to create explosive plays um, were special. Now, what we've had discussions about, and I, I talked about it openly, like he's got to take the next step in his game. And I'm excited to see that because I think he's going to. See, even there at the beginning, right? It's uh, the plan is to go with Justin Fields for for now, right now. Like, like there's there's, there's like, like that caveat on there, right? It's just why why leave any breadcrumbs? Why why give anybody any room to wiggle in there and say, oh wait a minute, he just said right now, yeah, right now Justin Fields is the quarterback under contract, but two weeks from now, could they still trade him? Right? That that's that's what he leaves open there when he uses that language specifically, and I, I don't know if it's just being too honest or being, I don't want to say careless, but just not thinking it through fully, because you also hear him say like, yeah, Justin Fields made some of those wow plays and like he does need to step up. That's being honest. And they've been up, up front about how like, yeah, he needs to keep getting better. But then he says, we're excited about him and I think he will get better and we're excited about what that's going to look like. That That's what sounds like the GM was like, yeah, he needs to get better. Sure, we'll, we'll be honest with you about that. But we, we really think he will be. And we're excited about what that's going to be. Like, that's where it's talking about, yes, Fields is our guy. We, we are excited about what this will look like, what it's going to be. Talking future forward, not just, you know, previously we heard, oh, we liked what he did last year. Justin Fields did a lot of good things this year. But when he starts to use that forward talking language of, you know, he needs to get better and we think he will and we're excited about what he will be and where he will get to that will is future tense of like, yes, he's going to be around in the future tense. I think why the reason why he throws the Justin is our guy right now, or is the plan right now, the plan right now for now is Justin Fields as our starter is that, you know, they're not sure Justin Fields is the starter for five years, right? He's, he's the plan in 2023. And there's a separate discussion to be had here about next off season. But that's kind of what we talked about in, in when we talk about the trade down options and why the Bears shouldn't draft a quarterback this year is because presumably if they trade down from the number one overall pick, they if they go anywhere farther than about four, they're going to get at least one future first round pick for next year's draft so that if Justin Fields struggles this season for some reason and doesn't take that next step forward this year, then next offseason, we can have a real discussion about whether the Bears should draft a rookie quarterback, trade Justin Fields, and make that change at that time. And that's why I think Ryan Pohl says for now there and, and hasn't been as definitive as like Justin is our long-term guy, but I do think they're very clearly Justin Fields is their short-term guy. And it, it just, I, I haven't been able to find a good reason why Ryan Poles hasn't been more definitive about it. I mean, he, he was asked, like, have people called about trading for Justin Fields? Or he was asked, have you received calls from teams asking if 
Justin Fields is available. And he said something along the lines of, no, no one has asked us that specifically yet. Like, they haven't specifically gotten trade calls for Fields. He's gotten trade calls about the number one overall pick, but you haven't had teams specifically trying to pry Fields away from him. Like, all the evidence points to, like, they're not going to trade Fields. They don't want to trade Fields. Field is their guy. Why won't he say that? Just plain and clear, hey, guys, let me end some controversy. Like, by comparison, I don't know if you saw on Thursday, or excuse me, on Tuesday at the Combine, the, the Cincinnati Bengals general manager, Duke Tobin, came out, was asked about trading T. Higgins, who Bears fans would love to trade for, and he said, listen, man, T. Higgins is a great player. We want to have T. Higgins around, and you know, we keep hearing about all these other teams wanting to trade for T. Higgins. T. Higgins is our wide receiver. If you want a wide receiver, go find one of your own, because you're not getting ours. He came out and said, we are not going to trade T. Higgins. It's that simple for Ryan Poles to do the same thing, and I haven't found, like, a competitive advantage or a benefit for leaving that door even just a little bit open. So I'm left to conclude that he's just being honest and genuine. And I appreciate honesty and, and genuine, genuinity, ingenuity, genuine, genuinity. I appreciate his genuineness and, 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 and can, candidness, but like, this is the quarterback. Like, let's, let's not play around with the quarterback situation here. Let's not create any sort of controversy or battle for fields or let's just be behind your quarterback and put him in every position to be successful in that way, unless you're really going to do it. But we're past that point now. We're not really going to do it at this stage. And it's just, it's a frustration that he has complete control to sort of quiet down all the rumors and the noise and kind of continues to let that circle around his quarterback, which just doesn't seem like it's a benefit for anybody in this space. He need he needed one of these quarterbacks to blow him away, to jump off the page, to be a wow quarterback in this draft that they felt like they just have to upgrade Justin Fields and even though he says we're still evaluating and we're still doing our due diligence, I think we're at the point where we know these guys aren't quite yet. And I, and I want to, I really want to take the time to, to make that clear because we should do our due diligence on these quarterback prospects. And we'll go through what these quarterback prospects have and what they're lacking and why they, they're not quite the blow you away quarterback prospects in this draft next on Locked on Bears. I think it's a good idea for Ryan Poles to always evaluate the top quarterbacks, especially when you have the number one overall pick. You wouldn't want to just eschew a great quarterback prospect if there was one there that you truly felt like was an upgrade over Justin Fields. But if they're anywhere close and you have any kind of real question marks about these rookie quarterbacks to say, well, you know, maybe there's some things you might like about some of them more than Fields, but other things you don't, that is not the blow you away type of decision where you risk it all to try and get the truly better quarterback option for your team. And that's exactly what we're sitting with here in this 2023 NFL draft. The guy who's kind of the, not the consensus number one, but I think the guy who mostly sits at the top for, I guess the majority of, of draft analysts right now is Bryce Young from Alabama. And I'm not here to do like the in-depth full in-depth scouting report breakdown of these guys, but more so to compare them to Justin Fields and how Ryan Poles might look at these guys and be looking for that blow, blow you away. Wow. On the tape type tape. And for a guy like, for a guy like Bryce young, super accurate, great decision maker feels the pocket really well. I mean, does a lot of the sort of like main quarterbacking things that you want out of that position. Like I think of Bryce young as right now, probably a better passer right now than Justin Fields. I mean, Fields, is still developing more so as a passer. And that's a very real thing that Young might be that that truly better passer at, at this moment. But does he have that blow you away, wow stuff? You know, every quarterback has moments of it. I mean, not every quarterback, but you know, first round caliber quarterbacks will always have highlights. It's not that he doesn't have highlights, but it's comparing him to Justin Fields, right? I think Bryce Young has a super high floor. I think he checks pretty much all the boxes except for height and weight. And that can be kind of unfair for him. But, you know, what, what is the ceiling there? How great can he be? You know, he's not, he, he's good outside the pocket, but he's not Justin Fields dynamic of an athlete. He's got good arm strength, but it's not Josh Allen cannon arm. And he's got good playmaking ability, but it's not Patrick Mahomes pull a rabbit out of a hat miracle stuff at all times. So it's like, it, it's there. And I think he'll be a good quarterback, but it's not the jump out of the tape, wow, got to have it no matter what, give up Justin Fields kind of thing. Good quarterback. Many teams would be happy to have a good quarterback like Bryce Young, and 
you know, he, Bryce Young would probably be one of the better quarterbacks in Bears history t- t- comparatively. If if Justin Fields wasn't in the mix, you could make a strong argument to want to draft Bryce Young. But like, if you're looking for the guy to blow you away and be definitively better, like, there's some questions about the durability and some questions about I think exactly how high that ceiling is. I think you can make a Drew Brees comparison, but I don't think a Drew Brees outcome is is all that likely. And hey, Drew Brees was a second round pick who kind of flamed out on his first team and is kind of more the uh, the exception than the rule as far as quarterback development and quarterback prospects go. Or C.J. Stroud, the other Ohio State quarterback, a guy, another really accurate quarterback, great touch, good processing to go through his progressions really well, but, you know, doesn't have the cannon arm either, a little bit average in that regard. And the pocket presence is iffy at times, feeling the pressure properly. And I think he he fumbled a few times after taking hits in the pocket. There's some questions about how well he does when things break down and also had an elite set of wide receivers at Ohio State. And you wonder, you put him in Chicago or anywhere else that doesn't have as good of a supporting cast, what kind of what kind of individual ability he has to really raise the level of play of players around him. Same, same with Bryce Young in that regard. Compared to Fields, who single-handedly kept the Bears in a bunch of games last season, despite not having wide receivers or much of an offensive line to work with there. Right? Stroud has, much like Young, both have plays that do make you say, wow, but consistently enough to be that can't-miss prospect where you turn on the tape and your jaw is dropped, you say, you gotta have that guy? And not, not quite there with C.J. Stroud. Then you got Will Levis and Anthony Richardson. Both guys have some similarities. They're similar types of quarterback, but you know some key differences there. I don't want to lump them too close together, but both of them are big, strong, rocket arm talent who can throw a ball on a dot 60 yards downfield. They're both pretty athletic, good runners. I think Richardson is a little bit bigger and faster as a as a as like a, an athlete with the ball in his hands, a little bit more of a dynamic runner in the fields type of mold that way. But both guys have pretty sloppy mechanics here and there. I think Richardson is a little bit more technically sound, but just kind of inconsistent. And some of that was, there's some excuses about what was around him at Florida. But, you know, if your quarterback's going to be the one that blows you away, you don't really find excuses for him on his tape all that much. He's just great and always has an answer for that sort of thing. And a guy like Will Levis, you know, the footwork is is messy. And he, he's a guy who throws 100 miles an hour every time and doesn't really know how to put good touch on underneath passes or good placement, all right? He's he's just trying to gun it in there. And both of those prospects are guys that, you know, you feel like if you could develop them and clean a few things up, maybe something really special is there. But there's a question as to how likely they are to get there and how long it takes them to get there. And if you're talking about them versus Justin Fields, why would you restart the quarterback development prospect or process with a couple of prospects that have a lot of great traits but still need some cleaning up there and you're not sure how good they're actually going to be when it comes to the pro level where your margin of error is even smaller than what it was in college. Both guys have some cleaning up to do, but a lot to like. And you can see where with any of these guys, teams might fall in love with them and want to move up to the number one overall pick when they don't have a Justin Fields in their building to compare them to. You know, they don't have to, the the prospect doesn't have to be better than Justin Fields. It just has to be better than the other prospects better than that team's other quarterback options. And when you're the Panthers and or the Colts or you know maybe the Raiders and you don't have other real quarterback options, then you're only trying to figure out which rookie is, is the best of the best there that makes you have to go up and get that quarterback at the top of the draft. Free agency will obviously help decide which of these quarterbacks or which of these teams is more desperate to move up for a quarterback. And that's why that's probably about more the timing. We'll see the Bears make that this trade. The, Trade talks at the Combine is where things really start to solidify, but we still need to see, I think we'll need to see where Derek Carr and Aaron Rodgers and maybe Jimmy Garoppolo end up before we see a team really give their best offer on moving up to that number one overall pick. So I think it will be at least past the opening of free agency before the Bears really make that deal, unless it's to the Texans that go from one to two. I don't think you're going to see necessarily the Colts, Raiders, Panthers, or anybody else lower than that make the jump to one until they know for sure how the veteran quarterback market starts to shape out. Not all the veteran quarterbacks have to have landing spots, but I think at least a few of the big fish are available for enough teams that the trade will happen well in advance of the draft, but it'll still be a couple of weeks yet before we see that deal absolutely done. Whenever it happens, you can be sure we'll break it all down for you right here on the Locked On Bears podcast. So make sure you hit that subscribe button wherever you listen to the podcast or on the Locked On Bears YouTube channel. That's going to be the best way to keep up with all of our daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. 
Thanks for making the Locked On Bears podcast your first listen today. If you're looking for your second listen, you can check out the Locked On NFL podcast, looking at the league from the league-wide perspective. I was, I was one of the guest hosts on today's Wednesday Locked On NFL podcast with Tony Wiggins from Locked On Jaguars, one of my favorite friends here on the Locked On Podcast Network. He and I always have a good time in person around the podcast, a lot of joking back and forth. We talk about players to watch at the Combine. We talked about Andy Reid and how one more Super Bowl win this year has kind of bumped him up in the echelon of coaches and took uh, one of the big kind of pressures off his back to really win that second one. And we talk about Aaron Rodgers and whether he still belongs in the conversation as one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL and one of the top quarterbacks all time and whether the off-field stuff is tainting how we view Aaron Rodgers as an on-field quarterback. So quite a smorgasbord of NFL talk for you on the Locked On NFL podcast. I mean, you can stop listening before the Aaron Rodgers stuff if you don't want to hear more Aaron Rodgers talk, but go check out. We've been talking about some NFL scouting combine prospects, and Andy Reid's stuff is really interesting. He's an interesting, fun coach, and we have a, a fun kind of back-and-forth, lighthearted discussion about how we view the best coaches in and around the NFL. So check out Locked On NFL for your second listen today. Coming back to Locked On Bears tomorrow to make it your first listen once again tomorrow. And of course, you have to come back for your next opportunity to bear down.